good enough squirrel monkey, or a little speculation in need of some stronger evidence. So this is a short film that I put together after a trip down to London Zoo, where I saw a squirrel monkey with her baby, captured this on film, and then on looking at it afterwards, thought there was something interesting going on here. So here's the clip I'm going to discuss. The squirrel monkey arrives with a baby. He has to come to a standstill to eat, because unlike humans, squirrel monkeys perch on their hind legs, come to a standstill to eat. So here it is in slow motion. The squirrel monkey arrives with the baby, perched on her back. The baby goes across and bites into this branch, and this was what was really surprising me. Afterwards, I I connected this with something Donald Winnicott, a psychoanalyst, had written in the early 1950s, and that got me thinking a little bit more. The mother and baby depart together, just as they've arrived together. So, going through it step by step, the mother and baby arrive. Mother looks up. I'm not sure why. Then the baby looks up. And what I'm thinking here is maybe this is vicarious learning. Maybe it's copying what the mother's doing. It might be nothing more than coincidence. Then the mother lifts up the food to her mouth. So she's lifting up her arm. Then interestingly, the baby does the same. And this is most likely coincidence, but there's a possibility that when the mother lifted her arm up, her shoulder blade pressed on the infant, giving the infant a clue as to what she was doing. And the infant followed suit. Now the infant grabs onto the branch, the mother looks across, and I think in a reinforcing way, and then the baby bites into the branch. Now Winnicott wrote in 1951, quote, there is a wide variation to be found in a sequence of events which starts with the newborn infant's fist in mouth activities and that leads eventually on to an attachment to a teddy, a doll or soft toy or to a hard toy, unquote. And here obviously Winnicott was referring to human infants. And it got me thinking, you know, is there some relation of this process to what the squirrel monkey infant or baby was doing? Then the baby drops, falls down the tree slightly, and I thought the mother might be a little bit worried here, but she goes on to grab some more food to eat, and I thought perhaps uh, she wasn't too worried about the baby at that stage. And again, this got me thinking about something else Winnicott had written about called The Good Good Enough Mother, again in 1951, in fact, in the same paper on transitional objects. So, quote, The Good Enough Mother, as I have stated, starts off with an almost complete adaptation to her infant's needs, and as time proceeds, she adapts less and less completely, gradually, according to the infant's growing ability to deal with her failure. If all goes well, the infants can actually come to gain from the experience of frustration since incomplete adaptation to need 
makes objects real, that is to say, hated as well as loved. Unquote. Now, this is a gross oversimplification of what Winnicott was talking about here, and I've also selectively taken material. But what he's essentially saying is that the mother needs to provide a good enough environment uh, that if the environment is too perfect for the infant, it's not going to develop the skills it needs to. So perhaps the squirrel monkey carries on eating while the baby's falling down the tree so that it can learn to adapt to the circumstances. And maybe there's an analogy with what Winnicott was talking about. And just after this, the mother crouches down, which I think is possibly just to enable the baby to climb back onto her back. And then they leave together, just as they have arrived. Now, what's interesting here is that in his book, The Ancestor's Tale, from 2004, Richard Dawkins takes the reader on a journey where he goes back in time and we get to meet our ancestors or when we join the branches of the tree where we have a common ancestor he refers to this as a concestor and at rendezvous point six we meet up with the new world monkeys and that's basically 40 million years ago so what i'm thinking is are some of these things that winnicott was describing activities or phenomena that were common to our ancestors 40 million years ago. Your speculation. <laughs>